아, 안녕하세요. 매일매일 운동하기를 매일 실천하고 있는 동탄 왕콩입니다. 아, 오늘은 월요일인가요? 화요일인가? 네, 오늘 화요일이죠. 아, 오늘 쉬는 날 막날입니다. 내일부터 설 연휴 끝나고 다음 주 월요일까지 쭉 일을 해야 됩니다. 힘든 나날이 될것 같아요. 음. 어, 일단 오늘 날씨 너무 좋습니다. 어제도 날씨 좋았거든요. 어제도 운전하고 서울 가는데 하늘 너무 좋았고요. 오늘도 운전해서 내려오는데 아, 서부 간선도로 진짜 거기는 답도 없어요, 진짜. 차 엄청 막힙니다. 오지게 막혀요. 근데 일단 와, 날씨가 너무 좋습니다. 지금 밖에 하늘이 아주 푸르르고 그래요. 설날 날씨 어떤지 모르겠네요. 어쨌든 사회적 거리두기 계속 5인 이상 집합 금지가 유지되고 있죠. 하, 그렇습니다. 과연 계약을 정상적으로 할수 있을지 3월 달에는 어떻게 될지 아 2월 초인데 2월은 없다 생각하죠 또. 자 운동합시다. 원래 오늘은 팔굽혀펴기 10개만 하려고 했습니다. 하지만 스트레칭을 조금 하고 팔굽혀펴기를 좀 열심히 해볼게요. 확실히 쉬었더니 그래도 좀 여유가 있습니다. 역시 운동할 때 CMN이죠. 
the first to get their shots of uh, oh, Russia's Iran, Iran go. Iran <laughs> has <laughs> been the hardest hit uh, Middle East country with more than 1.4 million known COVID cases so far. And CNN's Nick Payton Walsh is covering this story from London. He joins us now live. Good to see you, Nick. So, of course, the biggest challenge for all countries across the globe has been actually administering these vaccines. And eventually, Iran will do what other countries need to do, which is do it en masse. What is the plan? What is the goal going forward? Well, there is a hope in Iran that they can use the Sputnik V vaccine to push through hundreds of thousands of doses by the end of their calendar year in March. The first recipient, though, uh, Pasa Namaki, the son of Saeed Namaki, the Iranian health minister, uh, a bright young student. He's described by uh, state media and obviously willing to take this vaccine as a show uh, of, frankly, trust in a, a Russian jab, uh, I should say, a, a Russian vaccine, which initially received Received a skeptical welcome from some scientists because it was registered ahead of its phase three trials, although a subsequent Lancet study has suggested it may be in excess of 90% effective. That will put it uh, in a pretty much the higher range in comparison to other uh, globally developed vaccines as well. This is not Iran's sole bid to try and vaccinate its population, as you pointed out yourself. 1.4 million cases that have been registered there in a country that has been remarkably heavily hit. I remember being in one of their ICUs uh, towards the end of last year and just seeing the, the volume of patients there. In fact, one ICU we arrived in, there was a dead body in the corridor on our arrival. They have really been struggling in Iran, but also to some degree too proud of the resilience they've said uh, in the face of the damage to their capacity to get medicine, to get healthcare options through because of sanctions led by the United States. The pandemic hitting Iran so hard in the Middle East. In fact, yesterday they recorded over 7,000 cases in one day. Startling numbers and this particular day a sign perhaps of uh, Iran getting some assistance from Moscow and then they hope uh, in the uh, months ahead they will be able to receive over 15 million doses of vaccine from the COVAX global program, part of whom will be from the AstraZeneca uh, system here in the United Kingdom from Oxford. But a real rush to vaccinate in Iran here because of how intensely that nation has been hit. Rosemary? Yeah, totally understand. Uh, Nick Payton Morsh bringing us the latest from London. Many thanks. Well, meantime, the US and Iran have apparently hit a stalemate over their joint return to the 2015 nuclear agreement. Iran's supreme leader says the US needs to lift economic sanctions before it returns to the deal. But President Joe Biden says he won't lift sanctions in return for negotiations. CNN's Wolf Blitzer asked Secretary of State Antony Blinken what he thinks should happen next. The problem we face now, Wolf, is that in recent months, uh, Iran has lifted uh, one restraint after another. That was, they were being held in check by the agreement. We got out of the agreement. Our, Iran started to lift the various restraints in the agreement. And the result is they are closer uh, than they've been to having the capacity on short order to produce the saw material for a nuclear weapon. They need to come back into compliance. And if they do, uh, we uh, will look to do the same thing. During that same interview, Blinken addressed the Biden administration's policy toward China. Take a listen. We have to engage China from a position of strength. And whether it's the adversarial aspects of the relationship, the competitive ones, or the cooperative ones, uh, which are there in our, in our mutual interest, we have to deal with it from a position of strength. That means having strong alliances. That's a source of advantage for us, not denigrating our alliances. It means, as we were talking about earlier, showing up again oh. and engaging. Because if we don't, when we pull down, <laughs> we do that. China fills in. It means standing up for our values, not abdicating them. When we see the abuse of uh, the rights of the Uyghurs in Xinjiang, or democracy uh, in Hong Kong. It means making sure that we're postured militarily to deter aggression, and it means investing in our own people so that they can compete effectively. And despite some of his criticisms of Trump policies, Blinken also acknowledged the former president was right on his tough approach toward China. Well, U.S. President Joe Biden is focusing his attention on his COVID relief proposal as his predecessor's impeachment trial begins in the Senate today. CNN's Phil Mattingly has the details. I don't expect that will be a primary focus for him this week or of his senior staff either. On the eve of his predecessor's second impeachment trial, 
The president uh, himself would tell you that we keep him pretty busy and he has a full schedule this week. President Biden focused primarily on one thing, COVID relief. We're encouraged that both Speaker Pelosi and Majority Leader Schumer are in full agreement about the need to move swiftly on the president's proposal. And the committee markups we'll see throughout the week are evidence of Congress acting on that expeditiously. So come on in. Biden underscoring the need for federal assistance during a virtual tour of a vaccination site at an NFL stadium in Glendale, Arizona. To help us uh, vaccinate more people more quickly and to get ahead of this virus instead of behind it. But with congressional Democrats moving forward this week without GOP support, we have enormous crises and we have got to pass that legislation as soon as we possibly can. Razor thin majorities in both chambers bringing in early tests with the highest stakes. Biden already signaling a key progressive provision. $15 minimum wage may not survive. I put it in, but I don't think it's going to survive. Biden citing Senate rules for the provisions to mind. Chair Bernie Sanders is full of lawyers working as hard as we can to make the case to the parliamentarian that in fact raising the minimum wage will have significant budget implications and in fact should be consistent <sighs> with uh, reconciliation uh, rules. And the White House still unclear on how to proceed on another looming intraparty battle, the targeting of stimulus checks. It's still